is not made for anyone other than God. And although we create these idols, and although we create these things that we set in the place of, and all we're doing is blocking. Whatever we put up, we're just trying to block the view of God. We're no longer allowing it to be just one-on-one -on -one with us. We, we put something between us and God. And God says, whatever it is that we set there, he says, I will not allow it to stand. The father was talking to me about once again idolatry idolizing idols and the gods of idolatry will not stand in his presence he told me that he will not allow them to stand and so Every time we create or set something in the place where God is supposed to be, he told me to let you know tonight it will fall. It will not stand in his presence. He will not, it's, I don't know if you know what it is to have someone, let's say in a situation where, uh, they don't know their place and they they may come and they may sit in the president's chair they've been invited to the meeting <laughs> or they show up at the meeting and then instead of taking a seat of humility and sit they go and sit in the president's seat and so when the president shows up he has to now do what is he supposed to take a side seat to your ignorance or to your what i call uh 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 conceit and take a side seat and allow a person to sit in a seat that is not made for them, a seat of honor that it was not created for them. Mm -hmm. See, there is a place that is not made for anyone other than God. And although we create these idols and although we create these things that we set in the place of, and all we're doing is blocking. Whatever we put up, we're just trying to block the view of God. We're no longer allowing it to be just one-on-one -on -one with us. We, we put something between us and God. And God says, whatever it is that we set there, he says, I will not allow it to stand. It just won't be, it won't be set in the seat of honor, and he's going to take a side seat to it. That's good right there. I could just say, okay, well, bless you, and I could close it out. But because I know <laughs> you'll just forget what I just said, I'm going to drive it in a little bit, okay? He will not take a side seat, another seat, a back seat to what we have created as our idols and our gods. And, and I know believers will quickly deny that they have no other God. But we do. We ultimately, sometimes, we allow things to slowly take the place of being in the seat where God is supposed to be. In the place of importance where God is supposed to be. So let's just go right on into the scriptures. Um, first Samuel. Go to First Samuel. And this starts with the first uh, verse, First Samuel 5 and 1. I can tell you this. The holy thing and holiness is untouchable by idol worshipers. The holy things or holiness cannot be touched by idol worshipers. It's not created for them. It's why in the in Bible uh, times, honey, we've seen so many times where people who have uh, who are not uh, the 
uh, holy or in a place to where they're supposed to touch holy things, and they touch them and they find themselves in big troubles, sometimes dead. Sometimes because you just don't follow instructions that we find ourselves in, when it comes to the holy things. You know, I, I, I believe, Chandler, a lot of times what we, we forget in our everyday movement, you know, because we know we're so human. You know, we always like to drag God to us. Come on down here, God, and be like me. The devil is a liar. He will never be a, first of all, to be drugged down by you first. He's never going to come. You know, I hear people say, God, I'll meet you on your level. He'll meet you on your level of understanding. <laughs> but he's not going to lower his standard to meet you nowhere. When a king shows up, let me tell you what a king do. Even if he goes sit with the peasants, he never stopped being a king. He's not going to become a peasant. To eat with the peasants. Right. What he does, he shows up. Let me tell you about my father. He shows up into our lives to let us know who we are. So that we can come up out of our peasantness and realize that we're a royal priesthood. Right. He doesn't come down to us to bring us anywhere. He reaches. That When I reach, you know, I still maintain my level. My reach is, is the extension of me. Come on, y'all know this is good right here. My reach doesn't move me from my place. And when God can reach you, that doesn't mean he lowers himself to you. And so holiness and the holy things, idol worshipers need to back up. People who, have, uh, who, who find themselves where they place things before God and, and think it's okay. This is the word of God is for us tonight. This is believers too. I'm talking to the believers. Because um, sometimes we as believers, we'll get in the midst of something. And we think we can put any and everything in the battle. We're going to find that out too. You know, sometimes we try to call God to our little thing. We don't start it. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> okay. Let me read. I'm ahead of myself. Come on. Let's read. So starting with the first verse, it says, After the Philistines captured the ark of, of God, they took it from the battleground at, at Ebenezer to the town of Ashdod. They carried the ark of God into the temple of Dagon, and they placed it beside an idol of what? Dagon. And when the citizens of Ashtar went to see it the next morning, Dagon, their God, little G, <laughs> had fallen with his face to the ground in front of the ark of the Lord. So they took their little God, Dagon, and put him in his place again. Now let me just stop right there. This is what we as people have to understand. First of all, the foolishness to think that our God we can handle. That we have a God that we got to set someplace. If you got to take your God around as a, as a thing, like if, if this is your God, not the Bible, I'm talking about this item, object, let me just use this. If you got to carry your God around, uh, powers, uh, if, you gotta, if that's your power, you're already in trouble. Here they are. They, 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 first they took, let me tell you what they did. They took the ark of God. This is where the presence of God was dwelling. The children of Israel had an ark of, uh, for God that he dwelled there. This was his dwelling place for them, for him. They took that after in battle. Now, they were in battle with, uh, with the Philistines, the, the, uh, the Israelites, but they lost. Now, that's a whole other story because if they had been doing what they supposed to been doing, they wouldn't have lost to the Philistines. But that's another story. At the end of the day, God is still faithful to his people. Right. Now, don't ever get that twisted. And this right here will show us that just because the children of God get off track, it still ain't our place to touch them. And we still can't lower God to a standard just because we think we defeated somebody. Yeah. Here, the Philistines took the ark of God 
and put it next to, up to, equal to their God. I let that marinate for a second because this is the problem. We do this very same thing. We just don't call it our gods. But we'll take and set our God. We'll take the holy things and try to sit it on the same level with what we have placed in the place of God. And here is telling us that Dagon had fallen with his face to the ground <laughs> in front of the Lord, the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him in his place again. Let's try it again. See if you just stay up. up. <laughs> can, can, can you just sit up on the throne like we got you? You know, when you got to sit your God up and prop him up, that's a problem. You might need to find you another God. Because the, if he falls, who, who catching me? If my God falls and I got to go pick him up here on his face what will he do for me yeah. That's good stuff. oh I said but you know what this is basic 101 I'm gonna tell you what I'm teaching tonight is 101 uh stop the foolishness 101 <laughs> because we even to this day we still practice this we still practice picking up our little gods and Putting them up and so make sure that, that we good. We still pick up little gods and, and we still try to put it on the same level with God. This, uh, the ignorance of, of the Philistines is that they didn't catch it the first time. He fell on his face in front. He fell on his face. That sounded like to me like he had to bow. I don't know about y'all, but that sounded like to me like Dagon had to bow to the ark of God. Because he fell on his face. But then they didn't get it. They, they ran in and they, they picked him back up and put him back up there again. Yeah. 911 saved they gone. Verse. <laughs> got, a, got a 911 call in. Idle down. Idle God down. Verse 4 says, but the next morning the same thing happened. Dagon had fallen face down before the ark of the Lord again. But this is the kick in the head right here. This time, his head and hands had been broken off and were laying in the doorway. Only the trunk of his body was left intact. This is why to this day, neither of the priests of Dagon nor anyone who enters the temple of Dagon in Ashdod will step on his threshold. Now, let me tell you, it's a couple of things in this thing I, that I got to uh, bring out to you. First of all, the fact that you didn't get it, that, that you still have a God of Dagon, <laughs> tells me that, yeah, ignorance is running rampant. Because you still are worshiping, to this day, they said, in that temple, there's a worship of Dagon. So that tells you right there that, I don't, no matter what you teach, people are going to do what they want to do. Oh, yeah. So that's why I'm talking and screaming to the people of God. Listen, don't be ignorant in the face of God. Don't be ignorant when he's teaching and when he's showing you uh, uh, an absolute truth. Here, two times, your God done found himself on his face before the, 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 uh, the almighty God. And then on the second time, your head and your arms are off. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Something about the head. You take the head of something, the body dies. Right. Yeah. There's no more use. And then the arms. The arms is the movement of something. It's the thing that actually will, will, will either bring to or take from or, yeah. or nurture. It, it is, the, it is the, the tool that helps us. Took that. Took the head, which is your life and your ability. Your arms on your limbs, your limbs are your ability. But God made sure that, to let them know this is what your God is, your idol God is. He has no authority nor power. He broke them. You can't come in and say, we're going to set you back up there again. He broke. He broke his head off and he broke his arms off. And all you have is the trunk. 
And then this is the other part that got me. I said, how God had it laid at the threshold like he was trying to run. It looked like Dagon was on the run. Like you have stood before an almighty God and, mm -hmm. and, and your, your best shot is now laying at the threshold trying to make a break for it. He too can't stand in the presence of God. This is what the whole word of God is about tonight. Whatever it is that we have created to make our Dagon, yeah. whatever your Dagon is, it will not stand in the face of God. You can't set it like sometimes we'll try to develop, we'll try to make a, a program, we'll try to make a, 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 a ministry. <laughs> we're, we're good with that. We'll, as long as we call it ministry, we thank God has sanctioned it. I spit on it. Yeah, yeah that's right, baby. That's just total nuts. As long as we take, if we, as long as we call ministry behind it, we think that that God is blessing it. Mm -hmm. We have set it in a place that it's not supposed to be. We have put it in, in uh, up there with God. No, we can't do that. We can't make the decision what is holy and what is righteous. We can't do that. God is on a level all by himself. Yes, yes. There is no uh, uh, create something and set it there. Mm -hmm. You're not going to bring God to whatever you want to bring. This is the Philistine. You, you're going to take the ark of God and you're going to bring him to what you want him to do. It doesn't work like that. We cannot create stuff and think we're going to bring it to God or bring God to it. And then that's going to make it sanctioned. You'll find your idea, your little God with head off and no arms laying at the threshold. Unable, no power. And then we wonder why there is like in things that we do that it falls to the ground and die. Because we have set it someplace it wasn't supposed to set. Yes. You know, I wonder why this because it's not you have made first, it's your God, G, little G, and now you have set or tried to bring God to it. You set it next to God like it is equal to it is not. That's why I, I'm a little concerned when I hear people talking about how God is going to elevate them, it just bothers my soul. It just bothers my soul because it is not about elevation. Yeah. Yeah. That is like us taking, you know, and it's, it, well, it said God will exalt. He will. He will exalt you. But it, m most of the exalting that happens in that is because you're running hard for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're doing, you, you, you have made yourself noticeable yes, in the sight of God. It is never about us being something. I cannot preach this enough. Can I preach this enough? Oh my goodness, I'm a spitfire. It is never about people recognizing us. Who, who, who's that? Who's that? They so annoyed. Is it? Oh, scripture. Wow. God minimized their God and left them no hope. When he broke the head and the arms off of that thing, he minimized them. He, like, I want you to see what your God is before me. Mm -hmm. He is nothing. Yeah. I have minimized him and I've taken your hope. Mm -hmm. Because Anytime we put our trust in something, it's just like, you know, if we put our trust in our car and you go out there and you can't start it up, you, yeah, you, you tow down. You put your hope in, in, a, in a person and then they, you tow down when they, when they backstab you, ain't it? Anything that we take and set in the place of God, like anything that we try to put on the same level with God, he will break it. Show you it is minimal to me. I have noticed the most minute things that if I take a little bit of pride in it, for some reason I can't have it. Smallest thing. I would call it out, but y'all just would just fall out. Little things that I would think that who cares about that? But in the sight of God, this is how little gods get built. It start off a little thing with a pride in it. Oh, I take pride in this little, you know, this little bead. Yeah. 
And so then that little bead, you say, oh, well, you know, this little bead, I'm going to put it on a chain. And now I'm going to take this little chain and I'm going to hang it on my neck. Now all of a sudden I got a flashlight. Can y'all put some flashlights so this thing can pick up my bead on this necklace? <laughs> I need a spotlight. See how we just maximize and, and get something so small that we said it's, it's no thing. I don't take it's just something I like. It's not a pride thing. I just take a little pride in this thing a little bit. But it, it's the little thing that grows. And now we find ourselves. Now here I am. I got a team coming in. You know what? They got to carry 17 spotlights because I need to highlight my little bee. Did y'all get my bead just right? Because I just need to make sure y'all got my little bead. It ain't even no longer about preaching the word. My baby boy just left. It ain't even about preaching the word anymore. I'm just trying to be concerned about my bead. Is it shining? It's the small things. It's the little things. It's the stuff that we sometimes don't pay attention to that slips under the radar. That we'll find ourselves idolizing. Becoming our idol. Sometimes we ain't getting stuff because God knows if you get it, he already know you're going to be two, t- two miles down the road. Mm, that's right. You ain't going to do right. That's right. But good thing God, God didn't give me a call when I was a teenager. Good thing. Ain't no telling. I probably would have been running drugs across state line. Probably something like that. Okay. Keep laughing. Yeah. Would have been, you know, we, you know, we love to do the club. We'd have been in clubs in three states with a vehicle. Okay. And might not have made it out of some of them. Yeah, because we're mouthy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely mouthy. <laughs> I, made a, I made a note. He, took, he left that guard no hope. When he got ready to deal with the Philistines. Because see, this is how sometimes we do. We think we, we took a pride in something. We think we got, you know, we, we got our strength in this thing. You know, some people think they got money in the bank. They think that's their strength. Little do they know. Okay. It don't take but one market crash. One market crash to make the whole mighty yeah. U.S. dollar null and void. Yeah. It's been there before. The Great Depression. Call it. The Great Depression one day everybody good, the next day, pff, Black Friday. Rich people jumping out of windows. Can't live without their money. Why? That was their God. Can't, can't, the, thought of, of, the thought of living a common life just was, I'd rather die than to live a common life. That's, what, that's basically what they were saying. I've lost too much to live. Boy, that devil is slickster, isn't he? I'm trying to tell you, thank God, I know what it is to have nothing. I'm like Paul. I know what it is to be abased and exalted. I know what it is to have and not have. So if it ever got to not having, see, some people think, I'll never be broken in life. That's your business. But if it ever got down to that, I know what to do when it get broke. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> I've been there. We're going to be all right. Give me that bag of beans and that rice. We're going to be fine. You will live good. Be like uh, 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 Daniel and, and, the, and the other brothers. You know, in, in 30 days, you'll see, we, we, uh, we'll be good. We'll still be fat. <laughs> I know. Go to verse 6 because this is what we're talking about now. When God gets ready to show you, um, don't bring your God, don't bring your God to me. Sometimes we, we just um, arrogant in our ignorance. Bring your God in the face of God on the same level. And then you, you, you don't even have a reverence. But we, know we, we declare we don't do that. But keep on living because God has opened up our understanding that we have placed things in the place of God. Or we have put them on the level with our God. We have brought in our little God or brought our God and set him next to what we call our pride and joy. But this is this is what God has to say about that in verse six. Says then the Lord. Now, this is after I'm going to break your little God, take his head and his hands. Okay, 
This is what, and, and, and I'm saying this with a little humor, but I'm saying it with utmost seriousness. Because some of us are going to find ourselves in the hands of an angry God because we know better. Yeah, yeah. We get a little money. We get a little, a little rise uh, ahead, you know, get a little elevation. Uh, the, we, we get a little, uh, we, we call it a little, little uh, heads up, so to speak. And we forget where we come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you get a little, get a little, little like Pastor Ed, get a few jingle jingles in the pocket, you know. Little, little coins in the pocket. We get to shaking our little coins. And then all of a sudden, nobody, now you, 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 you the thing. You it. Now you gotta find a new a new crowd to be with, a new a new crew. You, you these these other folk that you done when you had nothing were good enough to hang with. Now all of a sudden you think you got something. Now you gotta find a new circle. What's wrong with us? I, I, I'm so sick. I'm gonna tell you about some of this investor stuff. Some of this ain't nothing but Ponzi schemes. Anyway, verse six. Cause after we have brought the God. And place them in our little temple to sit on across from our so-called little God. And after God take the head of your God. See, after he take your little thing that you got so much pride in and break it. So after, and some people say, don't be speaking. I ain't speaking. The word of God says it here. That he'll take your little God. And break the head off of it and the, the power and the authority that you have placed in this thing. See, some of us got money. Yeah. That's a God. Yeah. It has power and authority. But whenever you place money, which has power and authority up against God, he says, I will break it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll break the head off of it. And it has no power and no authority. It has no head, no reach. So keep putting all of your hope. Well, I don't care about nothing. I, as long as I got my money in the bank. You don't know. Here today, gone tomorrow. Everything we have, we have to place it at God's feet. We have to say, Lord, if, if it be thy will. Even if he gave it to you, you still got to carry it like a steward. Never think you own it. Never think the money in your account is yours. It belongs to the Lord. The earth is what? And what? What's the fullness? Everything in it. That includes your little account. It look your look your land, your cars. It's all of that is the fullness thereof. But if you make that your God, He will break the head and the arms of it. He will take the power and the authority of it. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes we take the blessings of the Lord and make it our God. He has blessed you and allowed you to receive an abundance. And instead of you blessing God and instead of you recognizing that, that it is the hand of the Lord, you sit and take a pride in it now. Now you something.